Hi, it's November 2020 and MX Linux still has been uh, topping the Linux distribution charts. So in this video, we will take a detailed look on how to dual boot Windows 10 and MX Linux. We will be dual booting using legacy BIOS mode and MBR partitioning scheme. I will be doing this on a Seagate 500 GB hard disk drive. The video for a dual boot using UEFI BIOS mode and GPT partitioning scheme will be released soon. So please subscribe if you haven't. So let's power on our machines. Okay, so once you log in into your computer, we want to download the ISO, a disk burning utility and a BCD editor. But before we do that, I want to tell you that this is the safest world, uh, ways to dual boot uh, MX Linux and Windows 10 and as well as the safest ways to remove MX Linux from the dual boot. So, uh, however, you can always go ahead and back up your data on a safer side. Uh, this is not going to affect your C and D drives or your, your Windows partitions basically. But if the means to do so, you can always go ahead and do that. So, uh, over here, I have a fresh install of Windows. So I have nothing to do actually. So, what I'll just, uh, once you have all this sorted, you want to open your favorite web browser and search for MX Linux. And then you can just click on, click on the first link over here and then come to downloads. And then when you come here, you can click on direct repo or torrents. And uh, if you click on direct repo, you will be uh, directed to the source force page from where you can download MX Linux. So uh, depending on which browser you are on Chrome, uh, the download should, st should start automatically over here. On the bottom left, on Firefox, you'll get a pop-up window. Which, and when you uh, press enter uh, for OK, uh, you can pro uh, map the progress on the top right. And on uh, Edge, as you can see probably, it's going to appear on the bottom, all right? So I'm just going to cancel this because I already have MX Linux downloaded here. Uh, and now what we're going to do is just close all of this. And uh, before we go ahead to download the uh, BCD editor and the disk burning utility, I want to talk a bit about the release cycle. So as you can see, a lot has been written over here. But to sum it up, basically MX Linux has uh, two release cycles. So the uh, version 19 is basically kind of like the LTS release. And then we have like 19.1 and 19.2. So this uh, 0.1 and 0.2 are basically the snapshot sec uh, which contains the security packages. So the base version is obviously always the 19 or 18. But uh, anything in, you see in decimal is basically just uh, snapshots and these are just having uh, bug fixes and security updates. So the one we are dealing with is 19.1 but obviously the latest snapshot is 19.2 but ultimately it's just MX19 alright. So once you have this clear we want to download the disk burning utility which is uh, Rufus and you can come down here to downloads and just click on this link here. And again, uh, it's going to prompt you to download. So I'm, I'm not going to download this because I already have it downloaded as you saw. And then we need a BCD editor. So I'm going to link all of these websites in the description. You can go ahead and just click there. So Easy BCD is actually a paid software, but uh, we can use the non-commercial version by registering. All right, so uh, you can down uh, download from here. All right, so once you have done all of this, you can just take your time to uh, install Rufus and Easy BCD. And once you've done that, just open Rufus. And meanwhile, you want to insert your USB device of minimum 8 gigs. So as you can see, probably uh, Rufus has detected my 8 gig USB device. And what we want to do is select our disk image, which is in the downloads folder. So you can just select your disk image. All right. And the partitioning scheme is going to be MBR because this is a legacy BIOS install. And you want to keep everything as it is and then just click on start. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to click on start because my USB device is ready. And this takes time actually. So once this is done, you can just close uh, Rufus. And Easy BCD actually is going to be optional for this video. Uh, so if you want to find out why we downloaded Easy BCD, please stick to the end of this video. Uh, all right, so we have done with all this. So the last thing we want to do is set up our uh, partitions. I'll just uh, remove uh, the USB device for the sake of focus. So this is my 500 gig hard disk drive. Uh, and we, I have around like 200 gigs, uh, exactly 200 gigs space left. So we're going to shrink this and depending on whatever space you have left, since this is a fresh install, I'm going to go ahead and shrink like 100 gigs. So uh, 100 gigs is 102400 and I can just go ahead and shrink this. And as you can see, exactly 100 gigs has been unallocated and uh, the volume D, which was 200 gigs, has been reduced to 100 gigs. So if you're going to ask me how did I came up with this number, uh, you obviously saw that we need to enter the size in megabytes. So you can open your calculator uh, and uh, you, whatever size you want to allocate in GBs, you can go ahead and just multiply that by 1024. So uh, it's a bit slow here. Yeah. So for example, if you want to like uh, allocate like 80 gigs, you can uh, multiply 80 by 1024. And uh, the number you get here is in the size in megabytes. You can just enter that. So once we have uh, made sure of all of this, we can just go ahead and now reboot our system. Uh, and you uh, you want to uh, enter your USB device as well. 
So just go ahead and restart. Once you turn on your power button, press one of the function keys shown on the screen which match with your motherboard or laptop manufacturer to enter the boot menu. Now select your USB device brand and using the arrow keys press enter. In my case it is uh, HP. Now select snapshot MX19. So once you select uh, snapshot MX19 will be booted up into this environment and then we can close the welcome message and come to the installer to install MX Linux. But before we do that we want to uh, open the terminal to create our partitions and I'll tell you in a while why we are creating the partitions via the terminal. So we want to open a utility called CF disk. Uh, and once we do that, uh, you can see that our partition table has loaded and uh, the information is here, my 500 gig hard disk drive, my windows partitions are SDA1, 2 and 3 formatted as NTFS and these are primary partitions. So since we are doing this uh, via the MBR partitioning scheme, uh, we can only create 4 primary partitions and 3 already have been created which means that our Linux partitions can't be created as SDA4. So what we are going to do is create uh, them as extended partitions. So the free space which we created in the windows boot uh, in the windows disk management utility is appearing here as green so we can use our uh, arrow keys to move up and down and left and right so what you want to do is come to the free space uh, select new and then hit enter and then use all of this and then create an extended partition so as we can see sda4 has been created as an extended partition and a branch has been created and we have a 100 gig free space over there so now what we want to do is come to the free space and create three partitions the uh, root partition, swap and home partitions. So uh, make sure that new is selected and hit enter and we want to create our uh, root partition. So root partition can be anything between uh, 10 to 40, 50 gigs. So I'm going to assign 30 gigs here and then hit on enter. And as you can see SDA5 has been created. Uh, and then what we want to do is come to the bootable section here and hit enter. And as you can see a little asterisk has appeared over here. Now what we want to do is uh, uh, create our swap area. By the way, we will be uh, installing the bootloader on the root partition. Okay, so now what we want to do is come to the free space and create our swap area. So swap area is basically your uh, virtual memory and that can be used whenever your physical memory is not available. So swap area should be equivalent to the amount of physical uh, memory installed. So in my case, I have 8 gigs of RAM installed. So I'm going to assign 8 gigs here. If you have 4 or 16 or 32, you can assign that number over there. So I have 8 gigs. Uh, I've assigned 8 gigs of swap here hit enter and then come over to type and then type 82 linux swap slash sol solaris this is what we want to make that into and then last but not the least we want to come to the free space and use whatever is left in my case is 62 gigs and create that uh, as a normal ext4 partition that will be used by the home folder so just use all of this and then now we have all our partitions ready so 30 gig partition is our root 8 gigs is swap and then 62 gigs is going to be used as home you want to make sure uh, take a note of that and now we are going to tab over to write hit enter and then type in yes for yes hit enter and then you can quit cf disk and the terminal as well now what we are going to do is double click on the installer icon and while the installer loads uh, we have to wait a while and then once it loads we can select our keyboard layout so mine is the us international keyboard uh, so i'm just going to keep the defaults however if yours is different you can change now you want to click on next and then uh, as you can see our partitioning uh, uh, and the installation type is being asked so the reason why i did the partitioning via the terminal is because when i click on the done partitioning tool it will open gparted and i'm not very fond of that application so i i did it via the cf disk utility however if you are comfortable with gparted you can always go ahead with this and now since we already have our partitions created we want to select uh, custom install on existing partitions and then click on next now what we want to do is select all the partition types so uh, on root we have sda5 30 gig partition we created remember and the home partition is the 62 gig partition so that is sda7 and uh, swap area is the 8 gig partition so we have that and the bootloader will be installed on the root partition so we have that now since we have selected all our partitions uh, as we had created in the cf disk utility we can just click on next and then it will tell us the summary so we can just click on yes and then uh, it will start installing so now it will ask us whether we want to install grub on uh, for linux and windows and we want to uh, select that and then the location will be mbr and then the boot disk will be your hard disk drive so sdb is my usb device 8 gig and sda is the uh, disk we are installing all of this on so you can just click on next and then you can uh, select your computer name and computer domain name 
and uh, Samba for file sharing. So I'm just going to uncheck this because uh, this can be installed later. Then click on next. And then you want to select your keyboard layout. So mine is again, like I told you, United States uh, English keyboard. You can select your time zone. So mine is, for example, in Asia. And uh, over here, I can select my time zone is Kolkata. And then you want to select whether you want to have the clock as 24 hours or 12 hour format. And I, I prefer it in the 12 hour format. So I'll just keep it as it is. And then we can click on next. And then you can type in your uh, uh, credentials here. And once you have typed in your credentials, you can uh, check whether you want to auto log in or not. I don't want to. And then we can just click on next. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we have set up everything, our partitions and uh, all of that. So the installer will now uh, complete the installation. And once that is done, we'll be prompted to reboot. So I'll see you then. All right, so as you can see, we are done with the installation and you can just keep the reboot uh, option checked and then just click on finish and your system will reboot. So once you reboot, uh, you will directly boot into the MX Grub, unlike the Manjaro or Ubuntu or dual boot installs, wherein we boot directly back into Windows. So uh, the first option is uh, MX Linux and uh, the last option is Windows 10. So you can just use the arrow keys to move up and down and hit enter to boot into the operating system of your choice. So there it is guys, this is how we dual boot MX Linux and Windows 10. If you like the video, please do subscribe and thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. But, but many of you might want to boot via the Windows bootloader and not Grub. So if you want to boot via the Windows bootloader, please keep watching. Alright, so if you want the dual boot to work via the Windows bootloader and not Grub, you simply have to open the BCD editor which is EasyBCD and click on yes when uh, it says do you want to allow this app to make changes and then you have to come to BCD deployment and uh, click on write MBR. So once that is done, we come to the edit boot menu option and then we see that Windows 10 is the only uh, operating system detected by the Windows bootloader. And obviously we're not going to uh, wipe off the Windows bootloader because that is why we are doing all of this. So what we want to do is make sure that our uh, Windows bootloader can detect our Linux partition. So come to add new entry and then select Linux slash BSD. The type is going to be grub2 and here we are going to type in the name of our distribution which is MX Linux and you can also add 19 here. And then we want to uh, in the drive section select where our partition is. So our bootloader is on the root partition which is the 30 gig partition we created. So select that and click on plus. And when you come to edit boot menu again, you can see that the MX Linux partition has been created. You want to make sure a Metro bootloader is checked and then you can just click on save settings. Now, of course, this is a bit resource holic. So if you want to do something a bit uh, easier, which is uh, if you want something which is easier on the system, if you have less resources, what you can do is uh, select MX Linux as the default and then move this up. And this is how it should look like. However, if you have a better system with uh, uh, more resources, we are going to keep Windows 10 as default and I'm just going to reboot and show you how this is going to look like. So all, whatever you're doing, just save the settings and close this and reboot. All right, so whenever you power on your machine, you will have the Windows icon uh, loading. And once that loads, we will have the Metro bootloader, which will give us the option to boot into either of the operating systems. So as you can see, we are now able to select uh, which operating system we want to boot into. So as for MX Linux, we have already seen the booting procedure. So let's just test if Windows 10 is booting, which uh, it is obviously. So uh, basically, this is how we dual boot MX Linux and Windows 10. Uh, if you like the video, please do subscribe. I talked about how to uh, boot using Windows Boot Manager as well as Grub. So if you like the video, please do subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. I have a couple of other dual boot videos which you might want to check out. So please do check out and uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.